Hi, my name is Rubidium Wu. This is the new iPhone 11 Pro with triple cameras on the back. Apple called it Pro, like it's Mac Pro, MacBook Pro, iMac Pro. It gives the sense that it's a professional tool to shoot photos and make movies on. But could you really shoot a film with the iPhone 11 Pro? I did some tests to find out. phone through its paces, I compared it to my cinema camera, the Canon C200, which shoots 12-bit RAW. I tried a variety of lighting scenarios, uh, backlit, frontlit, uh, dialogue, interview, color, movement, and tracking. I used the Filmic Pro app in their um, 100 megabit per second form, and I tried various cameras in various settings in various modes. So let's start by looking at what how this phone takes video and what factors are working against it to be a cinema camera. The first and probably the biggest limitation of the phone is the size of the sensor. Uh, you have full frame now, you have Super 35 like the C200, you have a lot of people who have micro four thirds like the GH5 and the Blackmagic 4K pocket camera. A cell phone, because of its flatness and portability, has a tiny, tiny sensor. This means that its sensitivity to light is far below uh, any type of uh, dedicated DSLR or cinema camera. And also it can't really create depth of field, shallow depth of field, because the larger the sensor size, the easier that is to do. And when you have a tiny, tiny sensor, um, you're really not gonna get anything like the blurred out bokeh in the background. And that's fine. You know, Apple is able to cheat around this um, with the stills camera by taking the photo, detecting the face, and then blurring the background in post. You can't really do that unless you're wanting to um, rotoscope every <laughs> frame you have. The other thing about this phone that's really challenging um, to make films with is that it records in compressed format, H.264 or H.265. This means that all the color information color balance and compression is baked into the negative. Most cinema cameras can do 12 and above. Um, I found this guy is probably doing about seven. It also has a lot of processing in the chip of the camera and the sensor that work against capturing a log image and then making that uh, a nice cinema image. So keeping this in mind, I designed the tests so that most of them would have plenty of light um, and plenty of dynamic range for the camera to kind of show its best. The first test we did was our actor against a illuminated sheet of quarter grid. And you can see it holds up quite well. There's not very much noise, which I feel is like a really big problem. The native ISO of this camera is 50. It really needs a lot of light to thrive. Interestingly, with a lot of light, um, the image kind of appeared flat um, here it is compared to the C200 image, but it was still able to give me, I would say, a usable thing. If you embrace the limitations of the camera, sort of as the color grade of your film, you can get away with some pretty interesting shots. Next, we have the reverse of this shot with the daytime, overcast daytime, illuminating the model's face as she's talking just off camera. I thought this was a good test of you know, the majority of close-ups you're gonna have in a movie and it seemed to work okay. I, it wasn't spectacular. The skin tones were okay without being um, over the top. It's a hell of a lot better than uh, previous iPhones I've owned, um, but maybe because of the lens, maybe because of the uh, camera, it still, it still really struggled to give um, beautiful skin details. Again, the stills camera is light years ahead of the film camera, but I would call this a B plus. This is a passing grade, not extraordinary, but definitely good enough to tell a story. Next, we move to an interior lit shot. I lit this with the Hudson Spider Mozzie bounced off a six foot silver umbrella to give that specular, um, almost makeup um, commercial look. Here's where the iPhone really started to struggle because we were no longer in, you know, illuminating daylight, it was very bright and the cinema camera, I think, was on f5.6 at ISO 200, and yet the iPhone still really struggled. It, it just wasn't sensitive enough um, without adding a heap of noise um, to the image to really capture the um, performance. Anything that wasn't correctly exposed becomes incredibly noisy incredibly quickly. 
even though the background in this instance was quite bright, um, I turned the ISO all the way down and just increased the um, brightness of the scene through the lights. But still, uh, it, th I would call this like a C or a D shot. When you compare it to a dedicated cinema camera like the C200, um, suddenly this image comes to life and there's plenty of depth, plenty of contrast, the skin tones look fantastic. Um, this is your bread and butter of filmmaking, you know, your lit interior interviewer dialogue shots. and. I was surprised that the iPhone didn't do a better job with this. I tried the native camera, I tried Filmic Pro, um, I tried um, 4K 60p and down converting it, I tried cleaning it up in post. Nothing really made the colors pop and made the skin and uh, background usable. To test the color depth of the camera, I tried this uh, nightclub dancing kind of scene with uh, backlit uh, RGB LEDs. You see the C200, you know, looks great brings it to life the 14-bit raw um, has plenty of uh, color depth and uh, it looks the skin tones still look really natural and the red doesn't blow out even though it was quite bright on the iPhone heap of noise um, the colors blow out very very quickly you peak um, red and peak blue uh, and it doesn't look exactly pleasing to the eye um, and again a heap of noise we had a ring light on set. I put the model in front of the Hudson Spider this time and tried a beauty look. C200 again, handled it fine, beautiful skin tones, um, really nice roll off, no flare. When it came to the iPhone, really struggled again to capture nice skin tones, uh, which I feel like is, you know, shooting a movie about people, skin is gonna be a lot of what you're trying to get to look good. This again was a uh, ISO 200 um, F5.6 shot on the C200. And on the iPhone, it was really struggling again um, to get exposure, really struggling to kind of, um, even though it looked correctly exposed in Filmic Pro on the histogram, it was kind of tough um, to get something that looked nice. So does that mean that the iPhone is not a practical filmmaking tool? Not at all. You just have to play to the strengths of the phone and the sensor. So this camera needs a lot of light um, but doesn't handle, it doesn't have that much dynamic range. So outside shots, but not in bright sunlight is where this camera and the iPhone really comes into its own. If you can get a dedicated gimbal, um, the stabilization in the camera is pretty good, but if you want, you know, beautiful smooth tracking shots, I got the uh, Benro 3XS, um, which, you know, fits in your pocket. It's a tiny little unit. It will even add extra power to the phone. I attempted a tracking shot um, handheld with the C200. It was okay, you know, not great dynamic range. The, the sky was totally blown out once I exposed for the model's face. Um, and it's certainly not very smooth. Even with the stabilized lens turned on, it wasn't amazing. The iPhone 11 Pro version of the shot is spectacular. Um, 4K 60p slowed down to 24. It's beautiful, it's smooth, the sky is not clipped, um, the colors are beautiful. When you're getting a full body shot or even a, um, a medium or a cowboy shot, this one is spectacular. The, the image that comes off it is, is very usable and if someone brought me a challenge to shoot feature film with this film tomorrow, I would definitely do something like this. I would choose a story that takes place outside where there's plenty of light. I would um, always have the camera and the phone moving. Um, I would stay a fair distance from my um, characters and let the scenes play out in, in a mid or a wide. And uh, I would work out a way to tell a story that embraces the strengths of this camera because it is a great camera. It just has limitations. Can you shoot a movie on the new iPhone 11 Pro? My answer would be yes, you just need to do your research, play to the strengths of the phone rather than make it try to behave like a cinema camera because I guarantee you it can't. That's my look at the iPhone 11 Pro's um, video capabilities. Hope that helps someone out there. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.